Hey guys, today I'm going to show you five useful tips you should know within Blender part two. So let's get straight into it. So the first one we're going to look at is adding a simple gradient to your model. Uh, so if you've just slapped on a base color, in exact this example I've just slapped on a green color, um, it's okay, you know, but you might want to spruce it up with a gradient just to give it a bit more interest. So go over to the shading tab. You can see in your materials, you've got this principle, the SDF, um, and you've added the green. What we want to do is shift A and add, search for a gradient texture, first of all, and then shift A again and search for a color ramp. They spell color without a U. That's just the way they do <laughs> it. There we are. Right, put your color into um, the color into the base color, and then the factor into the factor on this, and you'll be able to control a gradient. But as you can see, it's going the wrong way compared to your model. What you want to do is press Control T on this section, and to add a texture coordinate and mapping node, uh, as long as you've got Node Wrangler Node Wrangler enabled on your add-ons, and you can simply just tweak these values. Probably just tweak the Y direction by ninety. You can see now it's in the right. The right space the way we want it. Uh, you just click on these sections here and you can give it a different color. So we'll give it like a a green, but we'll go for a darker green. And then on this one, we can go for a, a lighter green. It's already looking nice, I see. You could even go one step further and uh, move this over and add a new one in and uh, change that to an even lighter color. And then you've got a three step gradient, whatever you want. And it, look, it just gives it so much nicer of a look in your world rather than just the solid green. Next is one of my favorites, which is the auto mirror add-on. A lot of tutorials will tell you to um, go into edit mode, delete half of your mesh, and then add a mirror modifier, and then whatever you change on one side will do on the other side. That seems like a carry on. Same as if you wanted like half of this um, sphere, would you go and then delete half of it, and then you've just left with half? It's so much quicker to just go into your auto mirror add on um, and then just simply click the auto mirror button, depending on which you're an X, Y, or Z, whichever you want. But it automatically cuts it in half and applies the mirror. And then if you did want to just half the sphere very quickly, you can just delete the mirror. And then you've got your half sphere, sphere <laughs> straight away. Um, you, can you can get this through um, edit, preferences, add ons, and auto mirror. There it is. Mirror. Just tick that box. Oh, it's so useful for so, so many things. I recommend having it on all the time. Next, we're going to look at resetting the rotation and the position of your models. Um, this example, I've got these Triceratops walkie talkie. Uh, I'm just moving it around, positioning it for a nice render in different scenarios. But what if I wanted it to go back to its original point where it was stood up and in the, in the center? Providing you haven't applied any rotation and any transformations, you know, with control A and apply, if you haven't done any of these, you could simply just press Alt R and then Alt G and it'll reset it back to the original point. It's that simple. So you can just click on any of these, Alt R, Alt G, and it'll do it. Take it back to the exact point that it was originally, providing you haven't applied anything. Another useful tip is the select similar feature. So if, for example, you've retopologized re your mesh like this and you need to make all these sharps into seams, you don't want to go around clicking every single one of them and selecting them all and right clicking mark seam, whatever. Once you've selected one, you can simply just select one of these sharps, press Shift G and click Sharpness. That'll select every single other sharp that's in your model. Then you can just right click and mark seam and it'll mark them all at the exact same time. It has other features as well as uh, selecting similar creases, bevels, seams as well. Just play around with it, but yeah, it is very useful. It speeds up a lot of your workflow. And lastly, we're gonna look at parenting objects to one another. So if you want one object to move whilst another is moving, then you need to parent it, simply put. Very helpful for when you're doing turnarounds. If you have a camera and an empty in your scene, you can click the camera and click the empty and then press Control P and up, set parent to object key transform. Now you can rotate the empty and your camera will move around your object. You can do the same um, 
providing obviously providing the empty is where the object is. This allows you then if we go if we go into camera mode, we can rotate this and all the way around your model. And then if you need to, you can clear the parent by clicking again, clicking the camera and what it's parented to, Alt P and clear the parent. Now it can move independently on its own. And that rounds up tips for part two. I hope that was useful to you guys. If you enjoyed the video, please click that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. And I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers, guys.